Family Planning Association of India. We are an NGO that has been working on sexual reproductive health for the past 75 years. And our core programs are basically family planning, as the name suggests, and sexual reproductive health issues. Uh, she is Achi, she is our counselor. She is Puna uh, Songla, we call her Asong. Puna uh, Songla Jamir, she is a counselor. I'm the general manager, I'm Vincent Bello. Thank you for, for coming. And the idea of this video meet is basically to, to sensitize the media fraternity on sexual reproductive health in emergencies. In Nagaland, we have not had so much of a problem or humanitarian crisis that, uh, that we had to keep things in order. So it is only in times of landslides or you know mock drills on uh, earthquakes. So those are the activities that we have been basically doing when it comes to disaster or humanitarian issues. We are all aware our neighbor Manipur state has gone through, uh, you know, problems. And we, as Family Planning Association of India, we conducted 29 health camps in Manipur state as a res humanitarian response uh, to the violence affected people. We have visited 29 relief centers and we were able to reach out to 3,000 plus people with sexual reproductive health issues or medical services. And keeping this experience in mind, Northeast has a protracted humanitarian crisis facing us. And so we have to be prepared. And FBA India Maglen branch is the only branch present in the Northeast here in Naglen, Kohima. And so we have been uh, selected, we have been the assigned train to be prepared for any emergencies. And this is where our mandate goes, sexual reproductive health in emergencies. I will read out the things that I've written that will be faster. Family Planning Association of India, which has been working on sexual reproductive health for the last 75 years, has launched the Spring 4 project, which focuses on preventing sexual and reproductive health. To prevent morbidity, mortality, and disability in crisis affected population. Over 110 million people have been forced to flee their homes, driven by three interconnected realities, violent conflict, climate change, and extreme poverty. Almost half of these are children. We're living through the greatest displacement crisis recorded in history. During conflict, natural disasters, and public health emergencies, sexual and reproductive health needs are often overlooked with staggering consequences. Pregnant women risk life-threatening complications without access to delivery, and emergency obstetric care services. Women and girls may lose access to family planning services, exposing them to unintended pregnancy in perilous conditions. Women and girls also become more vulnerable to sexual violence, exploitation, and HIV infection. During times of emergencies, and crisis. People are evacuated to relief centers or neighboring communities or villages. 
The effect of emergencies differs from community to community. In such a situation, protection mechanisms and service delivery breaks down. Sexual reproductive health services are essential and will have to be continued. FBA India, with its minimum initial service package, we call it MISP, ensures that clusters are identified through organizations to lead MISP implementation. This preparedness for MISP through training of humanitarian, this preparedness of MISP through training of humanitarian personnel in collaboration with volunteers, partner organizations, district level disaster management and health service delivery systems. Pre-preparedness is to bring all stakeholders together for collaboration and ready to respond to emergencies. FBA India Nagwin branch is among 12 branches across FBAI networks selected for implementation and training and advocacy that will respond within 72 hours where normal functioning and machinery needs supportive action. The MI, excuse me, MISP, that is long term, which we call it minimum initial service package. This is a very important, uh, uh, you know, service package for FBA India. The minimum initial service package is set of life-saving activities to be implemented at the onset of every humanitarian crisis. It is an internationally accepted minimum standard of care for reproductive health pioneered and rolled out by International Planned Parenthood Federation. The sexual and reproductive health services set out in the MISP can mean the difference between life and death for people affected by disaster. What is minimum initial service package? We call it six plus. Six plus. One, ensure health cluster identifies an organization to lead the MISP for SRH. That is one. Two, prevent sexual violence and response to the needs of survivors. Three. Prevent morbidity, mortality due to HIV and STIs. Four. Prevent excess maternal and newborn morbidity and mortality. Fifth, prevent unintended pregnancies. Six, plan for comprehensive SRH services integrated into primary health care and as soon as possible. And six plus, we call it six plus. It's not seven, but six plus. Ensure that safe abortion care is available to the full extent of the law in health center and hospitals. We have six MISB plus, and the plus is ensure that safe abortion care is available to the full extent of the law in health centers and in hospitals. So, why are we talking about MISP? Why are we talking about sexual reproductive health in emergencies? This is all because time is coming. Before it comes, we should be prepared. We should let the policy makers, we should let the people at the helm of affairs understand 
the need for services, focused services on sexual reproductive health, even in emergencies. In emergencies, in humanitarian settings, in disaster settings, crisis settings, what we normally look at is safety, food, shelter. Safety, food, shelter. But we overlook very important factors of sexual reproductive health needs of people of affected population. And that is why Family Planning Association of India <coughs> under SPRING project. SPRING project is being funded by what used to be formerly known as AUSAID, A-U-S-A-I-D, AUSAID, but it is now DFAT, D-F-A-T, <coughs> renamed. And so our agenda for calling the media people to kindly come and have this media meet is to talk about the works that we do and also to let you know of our intention to start campaigning, not for the ULB election yet, but to start campaigning for <clears throat> inclusion of sexual reproductive health services in emergencies. So we need to collaborate with disaster management authority, we need to collaborate with civil societies, we need to collaborate with youth, uh, we need to collaborate with health department, we need to collaborate with media so that we are able to jointly put our agenda, advocate for inclusion of sexual reproductive health in emergencies. That is all that, is all that I wanted to present. And now, <laughs> I thought I would take very little time, but I think I took more time. But we have one pager. We have a global fund <coughs> project going on. And since we are meeting you like this, we thought it would be very good for us to also, apart from spring project that we are advocating today, we also would like to you know, share with you of the Global Fund project activities and programs that we have. And uh, Puna Songla, our counselor. Actually, the, uh, our project name is called the C19 RNT Pitcoin for the Global Fund project, which has been implemented from 2023 to 2024. The Global Fund project it is, it is a project that aims to provide health services, uh, specifically the uh, sexual and reproductive health services for people. It is being implemented in 10 countries, not in the The objectives of the fund project are to strengthen countries to social protection, uh, increase awareness, rights, and opportunities, uh, physical change, and to provide integrated health clinic and specialist clinical services, and also to provide CAC sessions to young VLHRs and services for aging VLHRs. The key population under Global Fund are BLHMs, IQs, MSN, FSW, transgender, non-binary or bisexual, and partners of babies or high risk groups. But at the moment, the Latin branch are focusing on two key populations, that is the BLHMs and IQs. Under the Global Fund project, we also have uh, counter services. We have a medical officer that comes to our clinic every Tuesday and Friday every other month from 1 to 5 p.m. And we also have a specialist services that is a psychiatry. Uh, he visits our clinic every third and fourth Thursday, 2 to 5 in the evening. A physician who visits our clinic second and fourth Saturday, monthly, uh, 10 to 12 noon. And we also have an obstetrics and gynecologist appointment. And besides this, we also provide uh, counseling services like ART adherence and psychosocial support, and also lab services like 
hepatitis, HIV, and STI testing and screening. And we also have one, uh, monthly program partners here. Um, those are two CAC sessions with young people actually and outreach health services and support for the kids. This is a short update summary on the whole fund project. Thank you. If there is uh, any question, then we can quickly take. <coughs> Meantime, uh, this is.